Southstand. Oh 
for God's amazing grace in your life here this morning come on now anybody faithful for God's amazing grace in your life here this morning Hallelujah. Lord we thank you 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 for this day we thank you for this day we thank you for this day we thank you for the cross We thank you for your patience with us. Thank you for your patience with us. Praise God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor for what you have done. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor for what you're doing in our midst right now. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor for what you're about to do for what you're about to do for what you're about to do come on for what you're about to do hallelujah let's pray your will to be done here this morning your name to be glorified not one of us to walk away from today's service the same way we started watching at home throughout the world not one to walk away from the service and watching this service the same way touch heal deliver set free for your glory for your glory for we believe that with you all things are possible Hallelujah. all things are possible and precious Holy Spirit we ask you to continue to have your way in this place to have your way in this place your church and your people this is your church this is your people and we pray your will to be done and your name to be glorified in jesus name 
And everyone said, Amen. before you're seated, before you're seated in the presence of the Lord here this morning, find somebody and just look at them and say, 2018 is your year for a miraculous comeback. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is your year. Your year for your miraculous comeback in your families, your relationships, your destiny, your purpose. 2018 is your year. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. If I can have the ushers to come forward, we're going to take the offering at this time. Praise God. I'm going to take the offering at this time. Anybody um, just a little bit excited? Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and let me, let me, and as we give here this morning, remember when we give, we should be giving not to get. We should be giving out of a heart of thanksgiving because of what he's done. Because most of us, watch me now, most of us in this room shouldn't even be in the position. Yeah, I just messed somebody up just now. Shouldn't be, shouldn't, you know, you know you shouldn't even be in position with the opportunity to give. But God's been so good to you. Remember how he's been faithful when you haven't been faithful? Patient. And now here you are this morning with the opportunity to sow back into the kingdom of God so we can reach others, the hurting, the poor, the afflicted, the addicted, and the lost. Amen. It's a privilege. It's an honor. And, and what trust God has, has entrusted us with. Amen. To sow into other people's lives. We give. We should be giving with a joyful heart and out of a heart of thanksgiving for what he's done. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, um, Michael, why don't you come up here today real quick. Would you pray for the offering? But you know what? I had Ian yesterday was sharing a little bit. We're trying to get that for next month, the last Saturday of the month. Why don't you just um, remind everybody, and we're going to get some information out also. Um, 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 we're going to start getting flyers out because it's going to be a soul-winning night. Amen. If it ain't about souls, scratch it. Listen, listen, listen. Whatever we do, the Bible says whether we eat or drink or whatever we do. What does that mean? That means everything. If it's not, if it's not about the kingdom, I said if it's not about the kingdom, and if it's not about the cause, and if it's not about the heart of Jesus, what's the heart of Jesus? He came to find that which was lost. And if it's not connected to that, I can clearly tell you right now, you are not in God's will. You're building your own kingdom and not his kingdom. Anything we do should be connected to bringing people to the cross. Someone might say, well, what about when we're teaching the word to the people? Well, yeah, that's still connected to winning the loss because you're raising up soldiers to go out and reach the hurting, the afflicted, the addicted, the lost. Amen? So whatever you do, and it doesn't necessarily have to be behind a pulpit in a church because some people will say, well, if I'm not a pastor, am I really making it? Your pulpit's Monday through Friday with whatever God's graced you with and the talents he's given you. And you can be in business, in, a, in the business environment, and, and be glorifying God and impacting people for the glory of God. Amen? So the upcoming event that we're going to do at the end of the month, next month, is going to be for souls. And we will, you bring them, I believe they're going to get saved. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Good morning, saints. Good morning. So on July the 28th, which is Saturday, 6 o'clock p.m., we will be having a concert here. Yeah. Amen. Amen? But I, I want to inform you that it is more than a concert. Yeah. It's a ministry. So although there will be music to hear, there will be ministry going on and testimonies going on as well. And so I want you to bring 
anyone and everyone invite everyone to come because it's going to be powerful it's going to be holy spirit filled the presence of god will be here to break strongholds off of your life and off of anyone who hears we are in expectation for the lord to move that night amen and so i encourage you to come and and it will be dynamic in jesus name amen yes we have we have ian gilbert and myself will be uh, uh ministering and tony and tony where's tony somewhere yeah. where you at tony he's somewhere around he's, here. Somewhere. he's over there all right we will be delivering and ministering the word and and it, it's all about souls if it's not about souls it's not about nothing let me clarify one thing because there's a picture of me up there i'm not going to be singing I'm, I might, but I, but I might, I, but I, but I will be leading him to Jesus. Amen. I'll get there somehow. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm gonna work on him. I might write something <laughs> for him. You know. Guess, guess appearance, but. Because I was like, Pastor, is he singing? Is he got a son? No, no, no. Amen. Bless the Lord. Will you please <laughs> lift your tides into the air, please, yes. as we bring our tides and our giving. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. We appreciate you and we honor you. We approach your throne in the name of Jesus, Lord. We bring our tithes as you have commanded in your word, Father, so that you may have meat in your house, Father. Father, these are your people, Father. We are here gathered together, Father, corporately, Father. We just ask, Father, that you would bless this house, bless the tithe, bless the giving, Father. Bless, Father, the giving that we have poured into, Father, to obey your word, Father. You said that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we have not enough room to receive, Father, and you will rebuke the devourer for your mm. sakes and he shall not eat the fruit of our land so father we thank you we speak your word and declare your word that it is done in the name of jesus and let everyone in this house say amen amen oh god thank you praise the lord let's just go ahead and serve the people at this time again last saturday in july we'll have flyers we'll start getting the word out and let's invite somebody and um, the concert's free praise god amen look at someone and say that's how we roll also, this listen. Uh, 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 also, uh, next Saturday, so Fourth of July is Wednesday. We will be here on Wednesday night. We have small groups on Wednesday nights. But what we're gonna do, because I know a lot of people want to get to see the fireworks with their families and the kids and everything. So what we're gonna do is this. Um, next Wednesday, this coming up Wednesday, we're gonna still meet here. The doors will be open um, on Fourth of July uh, at seven o'clock. But we're going to have, um, uh, instead of breaking into groups, we're just going to have, in the beginning, we always gather for the first 10 or 15 minutes with an opening, just encouraging word or a testimony and, 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 uh, and a worship song. And then we break into groups. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, have some, a couple extra songs. We're going to worship the Lord. And then we're going to have a time of prayer here at these altars with all our groups. Amen. So we're going to pray for one another and encourage one another. And then we're going to dismiss. I'm going to try to get us out of here by like about 7.50 on Wednesday. So about 50-minute service, praise the Lord. And um, so um, this way people can go and enjoy the fireworks. After. I, I think usually most of the fireworks that go out, uh, on throughout the, the valley or throughout the, um, you know, in the city are at 9 o'clock, I believe. So that will give everybody plenty of time to hang out all day long, come to church, thank them, bless them, encourage one another, and then go enjoy some fireworks. Praise the Lord. So that will be Wednesday night. Wednesday night. And then we're going to resume and we're going to pick up the following week with a new topic for small groups, okay? And those groups have been phenomenal. We, we started with eight. We're up to ten groups now. And, and, and we got the teenagers up and running now. There's a whole group of teenagers that are getting together with Tony and Sienna kind of overseeing that. It's, 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 it's God's moving. I said God's moving. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, 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 so that's Wednesday. And then Saturday... July 7th, which is, you know, kind of like, you know, what people would say still 4th of July weekend. Um, July 7th, we will be here at 6 o'clock for Saturday night service, and we're going to have dinner, fellowship, full dinner for everybody um, after Saturday service. We're going to have fellowship afterwards, so invite somebody. We're going to have a, you know, I don't know exactly what. We're going to have a lot of food, amen? amen. We're going to do it the way we always do it, amen? In other words, you're not going to go through the line and there's not going to be enough. Or you know how people like will, will do something and then, and then afterwards it's like, you know, it's like they'll, 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 they'll do an outreach or something. And it's like it's a half of something and you're like, what is this, amen? 
and but they promote it and they make a big deal of it. And then when you get there, you're like, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, can, can I get a little bit more? And they're like, no, 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 that's all you can get. Well, just one. It's like if it's a hot dog, it's half a hot dog. <laughs> It, well, I, I don't know, but the Jesus I serve, and that works, that that runs this this house, this church. My Bible tells me that when he did something, there was leftovers. And I just said something, Amen. So we will make sure that if you want five plates of something, you will get five plates, Amen. And we will make sure that you eat every no, no plate, no no left, Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so, so invite somebody again, because maybe that'll be something that can um, help that, 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 you know, by saying, hey, there's dinner and I want you to invite you to the church service, then maybe because of the food, you know, and, the, and, and just that fellowship, that might be something that someone will respond that maybe they wouldn't have responded before. And we do the possible, then God will do the impossible. I always believe if you get them in here, man, that God will bring the increase. One plants and other waters, God brings the increase. Amen. So that's Saturday um, at 6 o'clock. Praise God. Awesome. Well, at this time, what we're going to do is, because we're going to take communion also, uh, um, um, the second half of the service. Um, but what, what I want to do right now is, because um, this is their last day with us, and um, I'm going to have um, 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 David and baby, his wife, are going to come up, and they're going to uh, take a, a, a little bit of time today. As I said before, they're going to share a little bit of what God's doing in Indonesia, all the way from Bali, Indonesia. God's um, using them in a powerful way there, going into the villages, ministering to the... Uh, anyway, they can share a little bit, and I just told them to share whatever God's put on the heart. They actually, even yesterday, David was um, sharing briefly here last night, um, prophetically, what God's doing in this house, amen. So I just, um, just release them to just um, let the Lord lead you guys. Um, with whatever God puts on your heart and also what to impart to the people here this morning. Um, and David's one of the original members, amen, of, uh, we go back, and there's others in here that started in the living room of my parents' house. This, this place is a byproduct, and he was a big part of my life because he actually um, ran and actually uh, uh, um, kind of... Um, um, directed those Bible studies early on. So actually, I was learning while you were, when you, because when I first got saved, um, and you were, when we got, we, we met each other at the airport, he was, um, um, again, um, God was using him to, to direct and guide those meetings. And I, and I, and actually, God used him to, 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 to teach me, you know. Um, and um, so I, I thank God for him. But we go back to, all the way back to 1994. Amen. Praise God. So all the way from Bali, Indonesia, praise God. Would you guys give a hand to David and his wife, baby, where's she at? Is she here? Where's she at? Where's your wife? We created a slide presentation oh, okay, that, that we'll back. start with, and my wife wanted to, to handle that. Okay, she's but you know. Back. You know, Pastor Gus, you said something. I mean, he says things, right? From the throne of God and imparts it. That's his job. But he also just struck my heart. There, there, there comes a time when we have to recognize the changing of the guard, the passing on of the baton. And for this ministry to thrive in the next generation, there needs to be an acceleration of passing the baton. And God clearly shows the leaders who these people are. And again, though, the house of God is like our lungs. We breathe in people and we breathe out people. That's a healthy church. Mm. People coming in and people going. People staying and maintaining and people going and setting up foreign bases like my wife and I have been doing. Honey, could you go ahead and start the slide presentation? <clears throat> I like to move around a little bit. You're following right? your footsteps. We, Gus and I are a lot alike. So God said, you know what? Someone's got to go. <laughs> it's not enough room for the two of you guys here. Someone's got to go. And so you know what? We have made a way. We, I've been over in Indonesia for eight and a half years. My brother went before. Our families are very close. 
And we have made a way all throughout 19,000 islands of Indonesia. We brought the arts, worship, and intercession to Indonesia. That's the heart of our ministry right there. And it's all the way around on the other side of the earth. Just south of the equator, Indonesia spreads about as far across the east to the west as the continental United States does in the northern hemisphere. And Bali is right in the middle, about 500 miles from Darwin, Australia. So right now the temperatures are in the mid 80s. It's like Hawaii because Australia is having its winter. And so there's breezes blowing in Australia. Don't ask me why we came to Phoenix in the summer. <laughs> My wife and I got married on the beach in Bali in uh, November of 2012 we had a little Ark of the Covenant uh, from Israel and one of the Jerusalem intercessors that mans one of the houses of prayer on the walls of the old city of Jerusalem brought that to us and we put our rings in it because marriage is a covenant before God so here we are being married Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Pastor Gus and his family couldn't be there. So we came here. We're almost ready to face our sixth year. I mean, we were tremendously blessed to be able to share a private ceremony here with some of the people from Fire and Water and recommit our vows to one another. Now, let me just say a quick word here. We all got stuff. We've all come out of stuff. We can't really compare our stuff with someone else's stuff because it's all stuff to God. And, and some of the most unholy people are the self-righteous that think because they've grown up in this that they don't have some stuff. Okay, you want the blessings of God. Move into obedience. And this is a hard word, but it might provoke some of you. Living together, it's God's ordained relationship, right? Weddings, marriage. It's not a, not a church and state thing. It's a God thing. It's the oldest institution in the Bible. And so he wants to get something to you. He wants to bless you. And so if you cohabit or you're in sexual relationship with someone, God, his spirit cannot dwell with unholiness. And we're working through things, right? So it's not an instant thing. But if you want the blessings of God, that's a beginning right there. You and your partner can say, you know what? Let's do this God's way. I mean, what have we accomplished doing it our way, right? Mess. And more mess. And sometimes just, here it is, just a small step of obedience. And all of a sudden, there's, there's less torment. The devil has just lost some ground. Because, you know, right, baptisms last night, that's a small step of obedience. And the next thing you know, how, how did I get... How do I get free? Okay, move into the next slide. I'm sorry. I preached myself happy. Okay, back to Indonesia. A lot of Westerners come to Kuta Beach. We jam right out there on the beach. We have street preaching right out on the beach. It's a... Hindu culture, but in the tourist zone, pretty much anything goes. So we can, we can preach, we can draw people. It's not, it, it, this group here, a small team of five, I could just see Bruce or 
Ronnie kind of working around or some of you who have been through some stuff, working through the crowd that gathers and leading people to the Lord. But the Lord called us to go into the mountains. We, we've been going all over Indonesia into remote villages, previously Christianized areas that are mixed with paganism and Christianity. And the Lord says, you know what? Now I want you to go into your own backyard. And here's our backyard. This is the mountains of Bali. And in these mountains, there are land-rich Hindu dynasty families, but they're cash poor. And we've come to give them something greater than cash, something greater than land. So God led us to this man and this man to us. He's a high Hindu priest, which means he's deep into witchcraft. And he was moved by worship. He's a musician. He's a creative man. He gave his heart to the Lord, filled with the Holy Spirit, growing in the Word of God. He's not completely free yet. Some of you can relate to that, right? You're, but does that mean that God can't use you in your process? Right? You start down here. I, you know, I heard what Dave said about the, the marriage thing. I don't know if this relationship is even meant to go on. Well, right? Maybe it's time to release. Or, you know what? We've been together a long time. Let's do this. Right? Either way, you advance. So this brother is not free yet, but we've, we're helping him start a church in his village. There's no church there. There's no Christians there. It's 100% Hindu and some violent young men. We're going to reach those violent young men. But we, the Lord gave us a strategy because we're living there. We got to be careful that we don't get booted out. These are totalitarian religious systems. Thousands of years. It's not like America where you can, you can go and you can get it done. Here, you have to be careful. Walk with wisdom. The Lord said, you're an artist. You're musicians. Start with that. These kids don't get good art instruction. But with the art instruction, they get Jesus every time. And we get the families because we've got the kids, we get the families. So here's the, here's the garage that this guy wants to convert and we're helping him. We just bought bamboo, bamboo flooring. They don't need chairs. They need to, I need a chair, but they need to be able to sit. Man, I'm telling you, I had to, my rear end hurts. I, I've never been more comfortable than sitting in the easy chairs in America. It's like, oh, therapy and the hot tub and all that stuff. None of that over there. They're sitting right on the floor. Here's my wife, the most precious thing that God ever gave to me. And she has a heart and a passion for kids. God uses passion. You know why God hates sexual immorality? Because it's misplaced passion. God says, that passion's for me. And you're not even legal in my department how i look at it the institution i created so if we can give that passion to god wow what he can do with passion anointed with the holy spirit is incredible so these kids are getting the purity of the passion now we went into a village it was five hours riding in that truck and and most of the indonesian people were gracious enough to let us sit up on the top to get the breeze while they got all the stuff in the back. But that's a hard seat. Those roads are rough. Five hours in, this was before we got married. I wanted to see what kind of woman my wife was in ministry. Dude, look at that. I mean, she had those kids instantly. And these are 2,000 kids in a village. 2,000 kids. In a, most of the population of Indonesia is young because they do not abort. They, pour, they, they are a family culture. It's a pure culture that way. So, and look at these kids here, filled with the Holy Spirit, on fire for God, where revival broke out in 1965. It's still going on. So, so we love touching those places. Five totalitarian religions, and, and the government protects those religions, and the religions don't look kindly at people converting to Christianity but we're able to do it. It's just a lot of wisdom each step of the way. And these are the kids that we've been ministering to and why they're praying 
is because every time we go in, we have them pray. And we tell them a little bit more about Jesus, a little bit more about Jesus. Month by month, we touch them. We're looking for a harvest. We're looking for a harvest. We're looking for a harvest. Keep, keep sowing, keep sowing, keep sowing, keep tending the garden. It's not about necessarily going all over the place. It's about going where God tells you to go. Revival is already there in Bali. Revival is already there in Bali. There's a painting that I did of the glory of God being poured out on Bali. From Bali to the nations and from the nations to Bali. From fire and water to Bali and from Bali to fire and water. Okay, honey. The. Oh. See, I, I, I'm an artist. Pastor Gus's wife is an artist. I like to take time with the transitions on the slides. Did you notice that? My wife just cut shot. You guys missed the transition. She cut. Here, back up. Let me, let me see the transition, honey. Just, just indulge me for a moment. See, look at that. Why would you want a cut shot when, I, when you got that going on, right? I want my wife to come up. Baby, where are you? Here she comes. Baby, why don't you tell them about this uh, Balinese dress that you're wearing? Um, my husband asked about me, but I really want to say I love you guys so much. So many times people ask, you miss your country? I said, for somehow it's not. I feel like this is home. And it is, there is connection there. So this is... I want this song, it's not about me or my husband, it's about you guys. How Jesus loves you so much. And I want to sing this song again. All of you, we stand up together. Close your eyes and put your hand on your chest. And the word in front, we will sing together. Jesus, by, by, buat saya. Jesus, by, by, buat saya. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Is good to me. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Is good to me. I cannot pay back your. time. Jesus Amen. Jesus is good. He is good to
to me. I've actually got three messages, but I'm just going to hit some high points. I really believe that fire and water is strategically positioned because they've done the work over the years. Uh, we don't have to pull up the passage, but if you're taking notes, please write this down. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 through 32. What that is, is it is a representation of what happens if you start with God as a nation, like America did. And then you move away from God and reject God. Each verse describes a new set of insanity. And eventually, at the end, you have cannibalism, self-destruction, national suicide. And America is rapidly on that path. Even with the great things God is doing, it's probably not enough to save the nation. We have to be honest. All of history, they, they never recover from this kind of a, a tailspin. And the Bible clearly shows what happens not only to a nation, but to an individual. Okay, so we can take the time to make the message about that, or we can start where many of you started, at the end of that cycle. So we already know the cycle, right? You guys have already walked through those steps into insanity, and you're taking steps out. So that what this church is doing is working. It's going into the neighborhoods. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Now, somebody's got to maintain the house, and somebody's got to go. We are based in Indonesia, which means we're a five-hour flight from China, five-hour flight from India. I think your pastor has been to India. We're, we've got Asia at our fingertips. It's very easy for us to go. We know the mindset of the Asian people. We're there amongst them, living amongst them. So we're in position for outreach, for missions outreach. This church is in position as a base to send teams. And we can also bring teams back. You notice Jesus' ministry. This was Jesus' ministry. He walked. He had a house in Capernaum. He turned his business over to his family and his brothers and said, run this, be blessed. I'm going to buy a house as a base in Capernaum. And he spent some time there, but most of the time he walked. You know, the religious leader said, don't go to Samaria. What did Jesus do? I think I'm going to structure my route through Samaria. He went to all the places that rattled the religious system. He walked. And everywhere he went, he had compassion on people. And he created a legacy because where he walked, he had 12 with him that he appointed. I've anointed and appointed you to do the works I'm, I'm doing, except you'll live longer than me, so you'll see even more uh, incredible results. This church is entering into what you might call the Middle Ages. Many of the leaders have been holding the ground here for a long time. And so, and, and, and this church has fathered sons. No one does that better than Frank and Bessie who have fathered Gus. And now the Lord has given Pastor Gus the next generation. But you guys are the next generation too. There is nothing. I, I, I just, I wept. I wept last night because I was thinking about our kids. 
the Lord said, I want you to focus on, see, there's, there's two glasses that you're given at an altar here. People come up and they turn their lives over to the Lord and they're transformed as adults. We've been through some stuff, right? It takes us years. And when the devil gets a hold of you, it takes twice as long to get free. God, God can set you free instantly, but you got to walk it. And that's what, that's the part that takes the time. So what's happened though? Half my life is gone. Every year that the devil holds you is less time you've got for the kingdom of God. And God wants to make a big impact with your life. And he'll, listen, he can do a lot with a little. So we, we appreciate every bit that comes forward to do the work of the kingdom. But what about kids? Hitler understood that kids was how you subvert the nation. Russian communism had the biggest group going was the comcells or uh, 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 small, small groups. And that was the lifeblood of communism. That It did not release its grip on Russia for almost 100 years. So the devil, what did he do in America? 60 million deaths. They don't even make it to life. They're aborted. Are you kidding me? And what have we got? We have a need for youth. So the politicians loosen up the borders. That's not helping the nation. It's undermining the nation because the people are not assimilating. It's, it's the West is self-destructing. Why? Because they rejected God. Again, Romans 1. So if the devil is targeting the kids, shouldn't we? And I was touched last night to see these kids in order. Somebody's doing their job here teaching these kids. They were well-behaved, but there was an anointing that flowed through them that touched people getting free. These are the kids that are the legacy. Now, there are some that have been in here and grown up in the church that can be released into some of the positions. We're thin. This church should have a 24-7 prayer going, 24-7, and that room dedicated for that, and an army of people praying that will volunteer to pray and coming. It's, we've got the ministry need, but we also need to have warriors that are trained for that. Where do you get them? I don't know anyone whose prayer reaches the throne of God better than kids. Are you kidding me? God move, God says, shut up a second to his angels. He says, wait, 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 wait quiet. These kids are praying. I, I, I got to hear that. I got to hear what they're saying. These kids are praying with a pure heart. You see, you build your prayer ministry with the kids. We've got the people that know how to lead prayer, that live their lives, not by talking about it, but they're up every morning at five, four hours straight praying. Man, some people think, gosh, I'd, I'd like to have that job. But you know what? It comes with all the burden of the care and the compassion for each person they pray for. That's why this ministry is so powerful. Man. My wife and I just getting backwashed in the anointing, just sleeping in Gus's old bedroom. And then we come out in the living room and getting blasted by the anointing in there. And then we stagger over here, getting blasted in the, we're going to carry that back to Indonesia. We needed to get refilled. There's a, there's a different kind of atmosphere over there, but this works over there. There's churches over there that are content to meet with golf claps and no anointing. They're content with that. And when I first got there, that church had me. They, what they did is they put me on a salary. And then they, I'm a minority in that nation. So I'm a Christmas tree ornament on the platform. And I, I kind of shook off that after about a, a, a six months of that. And I said, you know, what? I didn't come over here to play church. I came over here to reach the lost. And, and I got the opportunity to do that. I had a, a real, I, I'm alone. I don't have anyone. I, I don't know the language. St still really don't. My wife, no problem with knowing the language for her. So, so we get it done together. But I was alone at the time. I cried out to God and, 
And God says, I got you here because of the vision that you brought. But this is not, this is not where I want to use you. This is what got you into position. And he kept asking, because I kept saying, Lord, well, I got this vision, and I came over here to do this thing. And, and the Lord says, do you love my people? And, 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 and quite frankly, no. I didn't like the broken infrastructure of being in a third world country and you, a sea of motorcycles. I, I'm driving a car, and I'm afraid I'm going to kill somebody. And most of the time, I'm not happy because i got to watch all the time because people there will pull right out. It's a community culture, and they think that person is going to watch out for my interest. They should try coming to Phoenix and driving. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and I said, Lord, I, I'm having a hard time with that right now. And, and I said, I'm not really loving this situation at the church. What should I do? And the Lord says, I want you to go where my voice is dim. And I want you to watch me move because Frank and Bessie they laid hands on me and commissioned me from here this was the last I saw of Phoenix and and uh, Pastor Frank said you, you've already got all the tools you've grown up as a Christian you have parents that are Christians and, and, and I mean you, you, you're, you've fallen you've had your time in the world as well like most of us here have and you got all that you need but I didn't feel like I had the tools there until I went to a remote village, no church, hungry people. The team, the team that I went with, uh, they had a rice cooker in the back of that truck. And so we didn't have a problem eating. And this was this six hours to get in there. That's where I first heard that song, Jesus Baik. We had to hike down to this little ratty village. And the people were in rags and the women were weaving uh, ecot material like what my wife stand up honey that is so beautiful in these impoverished villages they're weaving garments like these just incredibly beautiful garments and they sang that song because they were so glad that somebody had come from a foreign country to see them my heart broke for those people and I saw a, a mother there holding her baby because in Timor where we were uh, the guests get to eat first then the adults, then the kids, and the animals are left to just search the dirt. And uh, I, I started deferring to others. I, I took my plate over to that mother. She was looking at nighttime. They had a generator on. Indonesians love electricity. And many of those villages don't have the electricity. So they're, they're sitting there with a generator going all night, lights, I can't sleep. And I saw that woman and her face haunted me because she was hungry. I walked over and gave her my plate and I just went out in the dark. It, the village didn't have electricity. I went out in the dark and I said, God, I do love your people. Yes. See, the vision came from God. I didn't, I didn't think it was good move me all the way around the world for the vision intercession art part of the vision and then I meet my wife the Lord says can you hold on a little bit to pieces of this vision but now I'm going to bring her vision into your vision and I'm going to have a bigger vision my wife is all about kids and he put me in a school teaching extracurricular art that come here honey you know people don't really want to see me honey they want to see you okay we got a lot going on here I don't want to uh, uh, labor this but you know, my wife uh, she was the person that they stuck out there to talk with me because she understood English well and she learned her English by asking the Lord to teach her English as she read the Bible. Isn't that amazing? So she learned her English reading the Bible. So here she is now, vice president of this school. And, I, and I'm going in there to teach the kids. They, they, they were not primed to know that there was a, a white guy from America that was going to teach the class. And I didn't go in wearing the little outfit. You know, I, 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 had, I had on a shirt with paint from doing artwork that I do here 
I had on flip flops and I just was in, I went in the class and I said, hey, I said, you're my class. And the girls go, ah! they ran out. A few minutes later, this beautiful woman brings the kids back in and says, this is your art instructor. It's okay. He's not going to hurt you. <laughs> By the end of the semester, 35 kids had signed up and they tromped down the hallway. You could hear the sound of their feet pounding at the end of the hallway. Miss Rena, Miss Rena, Mr. David is coming. Mr. David is coming up the stairs. The kids already could see that God was putting us together. I couldn't see it because I'd had so many years of from the Lord. No, not that one. Why, Lord? Well, for this reason. Oh, okay, all right. No, not that one. But with this one, I couldn't escape her. I kept stepping on her. I, I, no way to get around her. When God puts something together, it's awesome, and it's in the perfect time. Okay, okay. okay. One, one quick final closing note. If you want to be a good leader, you lead followers. You have to have followers. If you want to multiply, you lead leaders. And we must reproduce, we must regenerate, or we will simply die. And we'll be like all the places before all those churches in Revelation that God said, your examples to the church age, they're all dead now. They've been replaced by Islam. We have to father. Anybody can be a leader with servants or disciples, and we can be a boss and tell them what to do, but it's the fathers that make sons. When we call Papa Frank, Mama Bessie, it's because we know that they are father and mother. They've reproduced the spirit that is in them into our lives. So, and I see some good teachers here. There's a young lady that's been here at Firewater for a very long time, and she labors with these kids back there, unleashing the youth to make disciples. That's the key. These kids know how to get it done, and they are savvy to the technology. So the, the social media, they can, they've got it. They can do what we can't do. So what we can do is we can father them. And then the anointing is transferred from the father to a son. Paul and Timothy, Moses and Joshua, David and his son Solomon, Samuel, his sons were not raised such that that anointing could transfer. And God had to use judges to get it done. But Israel was a broken nation. The family had not been fathered properly. So as leaders, we've got to father. Success is defined by having a successor. Success without a successor is failure. We actually have to kind of program ourselves out of a job. We won't lose the job, though. We'll actually be honored as a father. And we have sons. Can you imagine 10 or 12 Gusses in here? Woo! Right? You're going to have to, some of them are going to have to go and come back in and go and come back in, right? Or how about Pastor Robert? Look at all of the incredible talent that comes from the streets. And, and, and many people have come and gone. The church is a breathing, living organism. We shouldn't mourn those who leave because we imparted something into their lives. We, that listen, they may not come back and give thanks. Jesus was used to that. You know, he, he, he healed the nine lepers. Only one came back. One of the fall of the nation is in Romans 1, verse 21. They, although they knew God, they knew where they had come from. They no longer honored God for who God was, and they weren't thankful. Let me, I've got to tell you something. It took me a month and a half to get 12 simple hinges where I could put a lock on it, hasps, they call those. 
and they weren't very well made. And I had to look everywhere because it's just little mom and pop shops in Indonesia jamming on the roadways. You, you, there's not even room to pull a car in there, let alone a motorcycle. You got to kind of park somewhere and then walk back. No, I don't have it. Well, where can I get it? I don't know. A month and a half of that. You come here to Home Depot. You want galvanized? You want copper? What size do you want? It, it just blew me away. Where's the thankfulness? I, I, I was deeply appreciative coming back. I had reverse culture shock. Okay, finishing up. I keep telling my wife she eventually is going to need these glasses too. <laughs> Teenagers learn by getting involved and doing and being released. So we have to release our leaders. Nurturing, mentoring, equipping. That's what the church does. Releasing, going, coming in and going out. Reproducing. That's exactly what we need to do to build a legacy. So the, the big keys here is the prayer effort. What, where would this church be without prayer? So Frank and Bessie are not going to be here indefinitely. We need to build a 24-7 that will, that will get it done. The kids can do that. And there are other ministries that can flow in too. That's one of the things I love about Fire and Water. They partner well. Right? Many of you have been involved in Teen Challenge. Other things. They partner well. I love that. And we can do the same in prayer. Get her done. Get her done. The reason that I'm pressing on this is because I know the power of Islam and some of these totalitarian ideologies. They don't make room. When they take the ground, it's very hard to get it back. And we've got it here. We've got the ground. So let's reproduce that. That means, that means on these Saturdays, that's important. We missed the last Saturday because we had to get ready for the next phase of our trip. We wanted to be here on Saturday morning. That's, that's part of the going out right here. Let's start right here. And also, let's go on the teams overseas. Honey, you want, have something you want to say? Uh, my husband will blow the so far. Let's we stand up. Uh, so far, yeah, we will raise our hand to bless Pastor Gus and all the leader over here. Before I go back to my country, this weapon we always use to the village to village. This is King David used before go to war. Before we go to war, we must release the army angel from God with the power and Holy Spirit. So I will ask my husband to blow so far and I will give this to Pastor Gus to pray. Okay, now this shofar, God loves, it's not just symbolism in the Bible. God loves God loves the Old Testament, and he loves what he did in the Old Testament. This is the Gideon shofar. Uh, when this shofar was sounded, 100,000 Midianites, these were swarming raiders that had invaded Israel, wiped out with this. So, so weapons can be a very unusual in the kingdom of God. So we're going to sound the shofar because it breaks the yokes. So, right? We're going to break the yokes. We're going to release the power of God in here. Now, this is not a spectator thing. When the shofar sounds, demons don't know what's going on. And you, and you guys need to join in by shouting too. That's how they did it. That's how the walls of Jericho went down. The shofar sounded and the people shouted and the walls came down. So when this sounds, you guys yell. My, but my wife will count it down. We will shout hallelujah and I release a blessing in this church and in the other country. One, raise your hand, army of God. This is army of God. I'm in the right place and the right people. And that's called army of God, fire and water. One, 
right now come on yeah sons daughters mothers fathers come on for your children come on hallelujah come on come on come on it's time to move Push forward! Hallelujah! Watch this. Hold on, David, stay here. Woo! God, if you're a fire, God, my God. Baby, come up here real quick, real quick, real quick, come here, come here. I want you to do, I want you to, just a couple seconds, I want you to do, just as he's, I want you to, you know, when you said, you know, with baby Grace being born, and I, and it confirmed, because I want to encourage everybody, what God's doing and a, and what God's doing, because I know God spoke to me about, this is a new season and and then you came along and you and then you shared it again with Sheila at home so I want you to speak that forth and release that in here so people can hear it like just the way you told me put the picture baby grace she is the beautiful baby and I just sing the song Jesus love me and her eyes is look at me and I shout to Sheila Sheila, your baby is a worshiper. She is an army. And I said, Pastor Gas, your baby born is a new season. It's a new season in this church. It's a new season on his life, his marriage, and this church new is season. a new season. New season. The seed must die so the new leaf will come out. The new army will come out from this church. The new army with the character. One thing I just said, I don't have pastor like this in my country. If I can cloning this pastor go to my country, I will bring. You guys, you have so powerful so passion, please, let's lay hand to Pastor Gus. Okay, Abba Father, Jesus, I Holy Spirit, I the fire of God I will flowing on him over and over and over and over. And we call the army of angels, protect his family. 
family, his beautiful wife, his beautiful daughter. We pray and we give all the blessing, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, said hallelujah. Watch this, watch it. Amen. New season. Look at some say it's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. 2018. Miraculous comebacks. Amen. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. Show ya! I want you. I want to do, and, we're going to, and then we're going to get ready for communion and dismiss here. I want, I want to, um, 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 Gilbert and Corrine, I want you guys quickly to come forward, quickly. I want you guys, these are the youth leaders. I want you to pray for them. Amen. I want the youth, real quick, I want you guys to pray. I want you guys to pray, and I want the congregation to spread their hands towards, to stretch their hands, to stretch their hands towards them. Yeah, 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 praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Working full time hours a week, all week long and just and still making time. And, and, and you know, the, the, you know, I'm, we're not talking about two hours a day either, you know, and and, and 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 they're here Saturday night for the children, for the youth and then Sunday morning serving. I mean, um, these are days off, you know. And not, amen, helping us, helping my family. Praise the Lord. Um, I want you guys just to pray. New season. It's a new season. It's a new season. Praise God. So why don't you guys come over here. Why don't you guys come around. And go ahead, baby. Go ahead and just whatever is on your heart. It's fun. It is new season, Liam. It is new day. God anointing flowing my way. Yes, Lord. Is this a no power and prosperity? Said, is a new season coming to me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Powerful, powerful new season for the youth. This is the new season. The youth will rise up. I'm calling the youth. Rise up from this leadership. Thank you, Lord Jesus. New season for youth. New season for youth. In Jesus mighty name. Wait, 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 quick, quick, stay right here, stay right here. Quick, Tony and Sienna, because they're, they're also helping with the, with, the, with the youth now on Wednesday nights with this Bible says. Come on, come on. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Quick, quick, quick. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sing it again, sing it again, sing it again. It's a new season. It's a new day. Go. Anointing. Yes, Lord. It's flowing my way. It's a river. It's a season of giving. I saw a river. I saw a river. It's a new season coming to me. Abba Father, I ask you from north, south, east, west, all the army angels, to rise up the new youth in this church, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus, will be the new music team. There is a new music from the youth in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And God is going to begin to anoint and appoint the next generation you guys are working with kids and you see the kids that the finger of God is upon and these are the ones now you have to impart to the youth to teach the youth yeah and, and see it what, what it does is it it keeps us from burning out because we're already working into the next generation we find the ones that we know are leaders and let them do some of the work 
They, they want to be appointed. They want to work. And watch, the, watch them take the burden off of you. Praise God. I, Lord, I just ask that you would show the leaders here the next ones, Father God. And Lord, if they go on from this house, that's all right. Because this house is a river that brings more in. Send them all over, Lord. And you'll send us more. Thank you, Jesus. Anoint these people, Father God. Resource them, Father God. Give them strength, Lord God. Give them an anointing, Lord God, to do the job. Give them supernatural insight and wisdom, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name. It's a season of power. Come on, come on. Watch this. I want to, I want, I want, I'm um, real quickly, real quickly. Um, 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 any, any, any teachers that are in here right now for the children that are not over, that are, that are, that are in this congregation that are, that are, that are, that are, that are teaching at the children's ministry. Amen. Make your way up here quickly. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Show ya! Hold your hands together. Hold your hands together. Stretch out your hands. Come on now. And as you're praying right now, we need more teachers. And if God's starting to move on some hearts here, I want you to make yourselves available after service and see Yota. 
or call during the week at church. I know God's starting to speak to some people. God's speaking to some people to step up. To step up. Look at someone say, step up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. this watch he's gonna do something we used to do this at the conferences and this is this is and when he when he does when he finishes I want everybody to shout charge we're on the offensive God hasn't given us a spirit of fear but a power love and a sound mind to cross over enemy lines with a shout of charge and a spirit of taking over it's a new season And it's time to move, amen? Look at someone and say, let's do this. In Jesus' name. And we need one another to get it done. Together. To get all hands on deck. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. David, go ahead. Where are my soldiers at? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all go back to our seat. Wow. 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 You know, this is one of those moments when you look back and you know, this is an altar that pushed this church and each one of us to the next level. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's wow. Look at some say, wow. wow. Praise the Lord. Um, Tony and Barbara, will you guys come up real quick? I want you guys to come up real quick, the two of you. That's what we're going to do, and then we're going to prepare for communion. David was talking about that God's raising people, and then there's people that maintain the church, and then, and then people, they go. And these two are, 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 and their family and their kids together are going to Mexico now every, every month. So what I'm going to, 
Once, and I want to, and it's time, it's time for us to start, you know, to take the fire that's here and set fires all around. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But I like what David said, but you know what? We need to be faithful to Saturday morning outreach. That's right. If we, we got to be faithful, if we're going to reach the world or other cities, we need to be faithful to our backyard. That's right. Oh, I want to go in there. And we're, we're going all around and going, doing, and, and, and our backyard's falling apart. No, we, we first take care of our backyard. And there's plenty to take care of the backyard and cities. Ah, praise God. Amen. Who's in? Tony, real quick, I'm going to have you guys, what we're going to do is, I'm going to have you guys pray for the offer. I'm going to, for David and Babe right now, we're going to take an offering for them. We're going to, and many were coming out and saying, are you taking up? We're going to sow into their ministry when they go back, as they go back to Indonesia. Um, it's, um, it's between you and the Lord now. Whatever God puts on your heart, all I'm going to say is just obey. I know God's already speaking to many. We're sown into the work that God's called them to overseas. Um, this offering, just what, if, if um, 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 you can just write to fire and water, um, um, and then we'll make one check to them, okay? So you can just write it to the church, or, you know, so you can get tax credit, all that good stuff. Uh, um, and, and, and then this offering specifically will get you one check, David, and, and we'll just write a check out of this offering, okay? Now I'm saying that for a reason, because you guys are going to Mexico. When are you going to Mexico? August 7th, 8th, right in there, that first weekend of August. Okay, because, in the, so what we're going to do is right before they go to Mexico, we're going to take an offering for them and for the work that's going on in Mexico. But I'm going to have you guys pray for their provision and what God's doing for increase. You're going to sow into them right now with your prayers. And then we're going to, we're going to consistently provide and help with the church in Mexico, which is real quick. You just said, because a pastor, you know, why don't you just cook quickly so people can start just, and uh, they need help. We were there in uh, December last year. And just real quick, he had, a, he had a sore on the bottom of his foot. And it went from a sore to amputating his foot amputating up to his knee, they amputated his leg. Uh, three weeks ago, he passed away. Two weeks ago, he passed away. Um, you know, the Bible says that beautiful in the eyes of the Lord of the death is one of his saints. You know, and even in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of struggles, God still gets the honor and the glory. The church keeps going forward. His wife has taken charge. One of his last dying wishes. He's got three sons that are pastors in different churches there. He didn't want none of his boys to pastor. He wanted his wife to pastor. So she's the pastor there now. So we're helping out. We're helping out that church. Pray for them. Two weeks ago, when four weeks ago, when he was in the hospital, they broke into their house. We just got word last uh, Friday night. My parents were just there last week. They broke into their house. But you know, like I said, even in the midst of tragedy and struggles, this woman is faithful. She says, it's okay. It's going to keep going on. The work of God is still going on. The enemy can do what he wants to do, but he's not going to get the final word. He's not going to get the, he don't have the final answer. God will get the honor and the glory. God will be lifted up on high, even in the midst of our battles and in our struggles. Real quick, I read something last week, and it goes like this. Good isn't always the will of God, but the will of God is always good. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. So God is using uh, uh, Tony and his family, uh, and again, to, to help, and, and God's uh, moving there. I mean, you know, last time he had shared, remember, with the kids and what, what God's doing um, in Mexico. And, um, and I believe that um, this is prophetic again, God just confirming that it's time for, especially for this church to really support and push and help and encourage and send out as much as we can to get this, um, to spread the fire and to meet needs, not just here, but as we are gonna be faithful to our backyard, but all around, amen. Like I said, Pastor Isaac and Zeb will be here from India, Fire and Water Church from India. They're gonna be here for a couple weeks in September. We'll be hearing more of them. Look at some and say, God's moving. Amen. What a privilege it is for us to have an opportunity to be connected to all this. Amen. 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 So, so what I want, and you know what's interesting? When he was talking about prayer 24-7, what happened to you? I know something happened to you. Because he, he, he told, told came up to me, he's like, man, we need, you know, we need to get, 
prayer. He goes, we need to get back to prayer here at the church. And, you know, my parents, and my, my, you know, my mom, and there was a prayer team. But he goes, man, we need to open up the church again for prayer. So, and I, and I, and, and, and there's so much that's been going on. And of course, with the baby, and I keep on saying, we're, we're going to meet, we'll talk about it some more. But God's placed in his heart, you know, for his family and for, to, to lead the, the prayer here um, during the week also to open up a day and start there. Amen. So I know that God is speaking clearly. So we need to, we need to talk some more about that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I, now everyone is saying amen. And everyone's like, praise the Lord. Yeah, all hands on deck. I expect to see you here then. Amen. Or, or save your amens. Amen. If you're going to amen, then be here when we do it. Amen. Are you all right? All right. So the, I want to bless how many people believe this is the right thing right now. Amen. You already seen their heart. They're awesome in this. And like I said, David goes back to the, the birthing of this ministry. Praise God. How awesome. So, um, Tom, would you pray? Would you guys pray for the offering? Then we'll take an offering, and then we'll take communion and dismiss. Amen? Amen. Who's glad you came today? Yeah. Praise God. Jesus. Let's everyone just stand up for a few moments. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And extend your hands toward, toward this altar. Toward David. Baby. Baby. And we may not all be able to go to Indonesia, but we can all sow into their ministry. We can all sow into what's going on in Indonesia. Okay? So let's all pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, right now we come before you, Father God. We just lift David and baby up right now, Father God. We pray, Lord, that your hand will be upon them even greater in these coming days, my Father God. Father, we pray that your anointing from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, Father God, that the fire from on high would just flow, my Father, like never before, Lord, in this new season, my Father God, that your anointing fire. would just bless, my fire. Lord. Hallelujah. Fire. Father, we thank you, my Father God. Father, we give you honor and we give you glory right now, my Lord. We thank you, my Father. We bless you, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, Lord, hallelujah, bless my Father God. Oh, the fire, oh, right now, Lord, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right now, bless my Father God, bless my Lord. Continue, Father, multiply right now, Father God, multiply, my Lord, hallelujah, do a work. That supernatural work, my Father God, for the next level, yes, for the next season, for that new season, my Father God. Children will be impacted around the world, not just Indonesia. Children will be impacted, my Father. Oh, right now. Father, right now. Ooh. Father, as we pick up this offering, Lord. Father, we join together with my brother and my sister. Together we hold hands. We lock arms with them right now, Father God. Father God, we pray that this offering will be, Lord, for the moving forward of your kingdom. For lives will be touched. Children will be reached. That next generation, Father God, that in the name of Jesus, children, Father God, will take the gospel back to their homes, to their schools, Lord, other children. Father, and right now, we sow, Lord. We sow into this, into this fertile ground, my Father God, and we give you honor, and we give you glory, and we say right now, we proclaim that in the name of Jesus, lives will be healed, lives will be saved, lives will be restored, families will be touched right now. Chains will be broken. We step out in faith, Lord. And we give it unto you. You receive the honor and the glory. And in the name of Jesus, everyone says, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord right now. Go ahead, the, um, ushers, please go ahead and serve the people right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to prepare our heart. As we take this offering, we're going to start preparing our hearts for communion. We're going to close the service with communion. Amen. Praise the Lord. It, it's a new season. It's a new day. Look at somebody. It's a new season. It's a new day. 
I, I, I can't do the next, I can't, I'm not, I'm like, I can't, that's as good as far as I can, amen, praise the Lord, praise God. Let's just, um, let's just worship the Lord as we take the offering, and then after the offering's taken, ushers, let's start serving the people for communion, amen? Praise the Lord, amen, amen, praise the Lord.
Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe there is an army being raised up. And you know, it's very important as we prepare our hearts at this time for communion to recognize that there's only one way to heaven. And his name is Jesus. The Bible reminds us that when we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, that we do it in remembrance of him. But the first important thing is to know him. So before we take communion, it's important to understand that you have to be saved. For the Bible says, but let every man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth of and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Well, we want to do it right in here. So, if you're in here and you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, we see what's happening in this place. We see how we're being led to even raise up our youth. And in order to be a leader for him, we have to be his. Amen? So if you're here right now and you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, if that's you, I'm just going to ask you to stand to your feet if you're ready today. If you're here, just stand to your feet wherever you are. Everybody's saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A good thing and a real bad thing. Because the bad part about it is we're the army that should be going and getting the unsaved and moving out of the seats for the unsaved to come in. So if we're not on point, if we're saying amen, we're saying hallelujah, then we're going to have to get on point and get on assignment and go and get more to raise them up to be just like us. Amen? If there's anybody that has any arts with their brothers in the house or any, you dislike your pastor or you just ask God for forgiveness right now. Can I have some elements, please? Thank you, Lou. Yes. <laughs> the Bible says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for this bread. This bread that represents your body that was bruised, whipped, and broken for our sins. We thank you, Lord, for hanging there on that cross for us. And now as we prepare to eat this, we do it in remembrance of you. You may eat. After the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink. Do it in remembrance of me. We thank you for your blood. The blood that was shed, that came streaming down as they crushed a crown of thorns on your head, as they pierced your side. The blood that covers the multitude of sin. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done as we visualize you there bleeding out for us. Every drop was a drop to cover every sin that we had. So we thank you, and we drink this in remembrance of you. You may drink.
You may pass your cups to the edge of your aisles. And as we recognize this, we recognize it to be a celebration. The disciples was bewildered after this and didn't understand what was getting ready to happen. But we know what happened because he went to the cross for us. He died. He hung his head. He stretched his arms wide. And believe it or not, he said, this is for you. He got back up with all power in his hands. And that's the power that we have today. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is the same power we have today. So we should be celebrating instead of sitting there trying to figure out what's getting ready to happen. We know what happened. And we should be giving them real praise in this house. Stand to your feet. Greet your neighbor and let's celebrate Jesus for what he's done for each and every one of us. Put your hand on the top. Put your hand. the Lord. Amen. Glory to 
Court. As we dismiss, don't forget again, Wednesday we'll be here at 7. We're going to dismiss early. And then Saturday night, 6 o'clock, this coming up Saturday, invite somebody. We're going to have dinner, fellowship, free dinner and fellowship for everybody Saturday night after the service, okay? Don't forget, 6 o'clock. What time? Lord, bless your people as they go home. Strengthen, fill, and use them this week for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, God bless you. You're all I